Hello friends and greetings for the day. Welcome back to another tutorial on ISTQB Advanced Level Test Management Certification. We are in chapter 2 talking about managing the product and still with our first segment that is 2.1 Test Matrix and today we shall be covering the third segment of it that is 2.1.3 the test reporting and trying to understand the various matrices which can be used on different primary dimensions and try understanding what these matrices are all about and how they can be used for various dimensions of testing. Well, to begin with, of course, in our previous tutorials of this particular chapter, we have told you what the test matrices are and how exactly this can be used to consistently monitor the ongoing progress on the project. The definition happens in planning. The monitoring control is about observations and certainly the completion phase have several set of matrices to be reported. But at this point of time, we would like to understand throughout the journey of the monitoring and control, what are those different dimensions which we can actually monitor with help of these matrices. And as a part of this particular segment, we'll be deep diving into that and discussing about each and every dimension in more detail. But before that, let's set up some quick in, you know, expectations and context about this particular discussion. To start with, of course, uh, the test management should understand how to interpret and use matrices to understand and report test stages. For higher levels of testing, such as system testing, system integration, acceptance, and security testing, the primary test basis is typically the work product, such as requirement specification, use cases, user stories, and product risk. Whereas matrices of structured coverage are more applicable to lower levels of testing, such as component testing, component integration testing, or any other thing which happens as a part of thing like maybe interface testing, etc. So while test management may be matrix, or uh, may use matrix of code coverage to measure the extent to which their test exercise the structure, the system under test reporting of higher test results should be tailored to the specific context and needs of the project. In very simple word, there might be different set of matrices required at different levels of testing. A test manager should be always understanding that and try understanding what kind of matrices should be required at what point of time. For example, even during the beginning of the life cycle or phases, during analysis, we would be more worried about what kind of test conditions have been identified, whether these conditions have been prioritized, have we resulted into identifying any kind of static defects while reviewing the requirements or work test basis, and similarly, when we come to the test design phase, we will have different set of matrices. Like we will talk about the number of test cases created, number of test cases traced back to the requirement, of what kind of identification we have had with respect to the uh, data preparation, then implementation would have, again, a lot of matrices related to data, environment, the prioritization, and <clears throat> many other things. So that's where we want to understand that the matrices do not remain the same. As we proceed with the life cycle, as we conduct different test levels, the set of matrices would be also different. So here we discussed that in the initial level of testing, like high, uh, initial levels, we would use more of like coverage measurements. But when it comes to the higher level of testing, we would more be interested in uh, completion and those matrices which reflect the management that how are we progressing and achieving the required goals. So further to add here, the objective of reporting matrix is to provide an immediate understanding of the information for the management purposes. Matrices can be reported as a snapshot of matrix at a point in time or as the evolution of matrix over time to evaluate the trends, which certainly talks about things where we can say at this particular interval of time, what is that we have done particularly, then what is the trend from the last three weeks of time. So generally when you say, for example, you're following agile methodology, then for a particular sprint, you will have the data, but you will also reflect a trend of the last three sprints that how you have been progressing and what is the accumulation. So we call them as cumulative data to present it to the leadership. So again, depending on the type of team and stakeholder you're reporting to, the audience would decide what is the formality of the report and what kind of content to be included and also the frequency of reporting, right? So with that note, we can understand what exactly the use of matrices are. So here we are also saying that product risk, defects, test progress, coverage, and related cost and test effort are measured and reported in specific ways at the end of the project. Let's deep dive into this and try understanding what it takes to monitor them. So right here are the examples for our reference. 
So matrices can be measured, uh, used to measure multiple things. Like we can talk about defects, risk, test, and coverage as well. So here are the example of product risk, like percentage of risk which have all tests passed, percentage of risk which have some or all tests failed, and percentage of risk not yet completely tested. I think again, uh, as per the syllabus is concerned, we are not having the formulas defined as a part of our syllabus. So you don't have to worry about calculating them. But just for your information, I would like to explain you one of them that how these things are calculated. Of course, each of the matrix would have a formula associated with it. So right here, if you see the first one, percentage of risk of which all tests have passed. That means first of all, we'll find out a risk. We will find out the traceability and figure out the number of test cases written for that risk. Then we will see the status of the test here and then certainly use the number of tests which is passed based on execution. And that ratio will give me the percentage of risk which have all tests passed. And that's how basically this cache measure, measured. Also to add here, these matrices can be used to assess the quality of the test basis and the effectiveness of the test cases in covering the product risk. Also to add, the next segment we have is the matrices which are related to defect measurement. So of course, the matrices are very well known to us. We have been using it for quite a long time. Accumulated number of resolved defects versus accumulated number of defects. Breakdown of the number of percentage of the defects by all these filters. So yes, we do find them as a part of the uh, field value in the defect report. And that can be pretty much used to use or reflect a particular matrix. So examples include <coughs> the test items or components uh, with the defect are related to the source of the defect, including requirement specification, new feature or regression, the test release to which it is targeted, the level or iteration introduced, detected and removed. We'll talk about this a bit later, but also would like to remind you that the detection, removal and introduction helps us to even do the effectiveness of the process. Like it can help you to define the improvement actions based on this information. We'll be having a dedicated chapter to talk about that is uh, next segment in this chapter itself to understand how the defect data can help us to do that. Now we have, of course, the priority and severity, which can be used as a filter, root cause and status at any point of time for a particular defect. So again, of course, all these matrices can be used to monitor the defect detection and resolution process, identify the areas of high defect density or defect severity and evaluate the test efficiencies and effectiveness. And indeed, all these matrices are not something new to us. We have been reporting as a test manager or being a senior test engineer in past, and we just are getting listed with them. So one of the matrices will be given to you and you will be asked which of the following is a matrix related to defect monitoring. So all you have to have to filter out is that and pick the right answer. In the same order, let's continue further. The next list of items are related to test progress and the other one is coverage. So for the test progress, of course, it's more about related to the status. So number of uh, test execution, number of tests uh, which has been planned, implemented, executed, passed, failed, blocked and skipped. And if you notice here, we have taken multiple phases of testing lifecycle into account, like test planned could be a part of planning, implemented will be a part of design and execution will happen during execution and then other status will follow. Same way the test effort may have number of actual versus planned resources, uh, resource hours devoted to testing. So sometimes what happens, we have dedicated number of hours to be spent for testing, but at any point of time during the execution phase or other phases, if you observe that the team is getting pulled off their responsibility, we would also like to monitor that. That's where this matrix would be very helpful. The other category is of course the coverage. So again, we know varieties of coverage which we measure. So requirement coverage, which certainly measures the percentage of required requirements that are covered by the test cases. Product risk coverage, which will be measuring all the identified product risk and their mitigation uh, by the test cases. And certainly the code coverage, which includes things like statement coverage, branch coverage, path coverage, condition coverage that are executed by the test cases. And that pretty much helps us to understand how exactly the matrices can be very much useful in terms of monitoring and on ongoing test activities and also measuring the coverage parameters. Last but not the least, we are also talking about the cost and effort. And right here is the list of those matrices which we can measure as a manager about cost and the test effort as well. So of course we do have residual risk or untested components for untested components, the potential impact and likelihood of defects in the components that are not tested. And same way the cost of overall testing, 
the actual versus planned cost of testing could be again a measure which we certainly consider in order to check the effectiveness of planning and also understand how much we have spent beyond the plan which would also help us to do better planning for the upcoming projects and even give us the effectiveness of the existing project because sometimes this extra amount spent or extra effort spent in doing something specific in a project would certainly add more value to the quality that is why you did it so you would like to reflect those numbers at the end of it finally to conclude of course uh, additionally it is useful to combine matrices from different categories like matrix that shows the correlation between the trends of open defect versus the trends of executed test or a matrix that shows the quality of test basis based on the number of defects found in the requirement so it's not necessary that a matrix should be used only independently that one at a time sometimes we can blend them together to create some good indicators which would be of great help for the management to understand how testing is increasing the value of quality how testing is adding value to the product and many other inferences finally to also add when test execution continues and fewer and fewer defects are identified a decision can be made at this point of time to terminate the tests this decision should be based on the reporting of the metric and the agreed exit criteria that means this is the point where we basically look forward to stop testing so consistent monitoring of different matrices would basically help us to keep an eye on the progress and as and when we observe that now we are not getting any critical defects or not many defects are being identified or at some point we don't identify any more defects then that is where we make a decision to stop testing but at the same time we also look forward to measure the exit criteria and try seeing that have we fulfilled everything what we were supposed to fulfill and if exit criteria are met we stop testing at this point of time so monitoring is not only about managing the ongoing progress but also to consistently measure that where are we with respect to the closure right so that's all from this particular tutorial team should you have anything else feel free to comment below i'm always there to address your queries and answer them well till then keep learning keep exploring keep understanding the context thanks for watching the video team and happy learning Thank you.